Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today on Essentially Jacob, we'll be reviewing Demashi's Swan Song, the last fragrance released by Francois Demashi at the House of Dior. That would be Sauvage Elixir before he retired and uh, left a wonderful void to be filled by none other than, Franz, uh, than um, Francis Kurjan. So, Demashi's last Sauvage is Sauvage Elixir, released in 2021. Let's get straight to it. First, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Jacob, all spelled together for extra perks. Thank you to my patrons who have pledged. This video is being filmed live on my main channel. I live stream every Saturday. You're all welcome to join me on my live streams every Saturday and partake in the chats. Let me cue in the chats. Hello, everybody. How's it going, you guys? Everybody's sending little gifts because today's my birthday. I am filming this review on my birthday. I asked for this fragrance uh, for my birthday. My mom got me this perfume, by the way. Thank you, mom, so much. And um, I've been testing it for a couple of weeks. Yes, it's a birthday present, but I've been working on this one. Now, I know it came out towards the end of last year, 2021. Now we are in summer 2022. To be precise, end of June, 30th of June, 2022. And most of the big perfume YouTubers out there, the second this perfume was out, they bought a bottle or got it gifted by, you know, Dior, whatever, and uh, reviewed it. So the bigger channels out there have reviewed Sauvage Elixir back in November, December. In winter, well, at least for the Northern Hemisphere, that was winter. In Australia, that would be summer. So we have this vision of Sauvage Elixir, how it smells, and the interpretation that a lot of reviewers have of it in the middle of winter. I wanted to wait because I had a sneaky suspicion. Sure, I sniffed testers when they came out in the perfume in the perfumeries and I smelt it and I was like, hmm, interesting substance for this one. But um, Sauvage Elixir has something in it that I thought, let me hold back on this one and come back to it in summer. Nobody's really going to be making reviews of this one in summer, but also nobody's going to be really testing this one in summer. It's a, you know, it's a winter release, autumn, winter release. It's, it's a heavy hitter. Everybody knew it was going to be a heavy hitter. Elixir is more concentrated than the Parfum. <laughs> and the Parfum is already intense. You could, by the way, check out the review of my Sauvage Parfum uh, video. Uh, the, the review of Sauvage Parfum in my video, also on my channel here on Essentially Jacob. Uh, and this one is already interestingly intense. But what struck me about Elixir, besides the fact that it has this little kind of like bottle, you know, like wine bottles at the bottom, like dented inwards to have even less liquid. It's a 60 mil bottle, right? But what struck me about this one is that if you look back at the ingredients, or in this case at the bottom of the perfume, um, at the ingredients... It actually reads, and the ingredients are so tiny, <laughs> I can barely read them, but there is uh, oak moss extract in it. And right now, because it's literally black on black, I cannot see it. But the oak moss extract or tree moss extract is indeed in here. $10 super Thank chat. Thank you for the Donna super Masabi. chat. Happy birthday. Donna Masati, actually, let me pop your cherry. Thank you for supporting uh, the Fashion Bunker. Woo! And we're popping a cherry for every super chat we get and donation. Thank you so much. So there's tree moss in here, you guys. And we're going to spray it now. This is insane. Now, I'm doing two sprays. It is in the middle of summer. It's super hot. Two sprays are actually already way too much. One spray is all you need. Very fascinating perfume in summer. In winter, it becomes a cold, cloying, metallic, hermetically sealed metallic box. 
with residue of rust and it's almost like you're licking that metal and it, it leaves that metallic blood taste on your tongue but in summer something else happens in the heat of summer what we get here strangely coffee tobacco coffee notes are not listed in here but the very first spray on your skin the opening burst to me is very similar and reminiscent to the original formulation of none other than Thierry Mugler's Amen. There's this Amen vibe going on in the surface of this fragrance. While, yes, it still does preserve at the bottom core, it's, you know, Sauvage, the douchebag DNA, the panty dropper DNA that a lot of, you know, those reviewers are going to talk about. And, um... The cringe element of this perfume is still there. However, Elixir has that oak moss in it. Listen, now the, the, the ingredients that they list in here are cinnamon, nutmeg, cardamom, grapefruit in the top notes. And the grapefruit is there. But however, we have lavender in the heart. And then we got licorice, sandalwood, amber, patchouli, and Haitian vetiver in the bottom notes. The amber, the patchouli is the similar type of patchouli that we have in Amen. Amen and Amen and Elixir, Sauvage Elixir, kind of share the same type of patchouli, which I think is what also, that patchouli kind of in Amen underlines the... the that coffee tobacco note, but in here it, the patchouli delivers, it's a weird combination between the cinnamon and the patchouli. It's like a spicier version of patchouli. Now this similarity to Amen fades very quick. And I'm talking about the first Amen in the caoutchouc rubber bottle, not all of the other flankers that came out later of Thierry Mugler's Amen. Um, Amen. Uh, so the that top memory of of Mugler is gone quite soon, and then what we're left with is something very interesting in summer, because when it's hot all around you, this perfume goes smooth, and I mean smooth. Yes, it still has the douchebag elements in it. Yes, it still has that metallic note in it. It's sauvage at the end of the day, but it's smooth. Intense, deep, and it keeps warming up on your skin. One spray is enough. Don't do more than one if you really want to enjoy this perfume. There are people out there that are oversprayers. The overachievers are usually also the oversprayers. The overachievers and the oversprayers are the ones that, that just... Keep going and going and going. Listen, I'm the type of person, I have here an example. Hold on. Gardenia by Chanel. I'm the first one to say guilty as charged. This perfume, I want, if you smell, if you spray this one just once or twice, mellow. Light floral coconutty thing. You spray it 30 times. Yeah, you heard me right. 30 times. Then you get to that poisonous green smell, typical of a gardenia, and you unlock that level of poisonous green smell with this one if you overspray 30 times. I know I go through these bottles like Kleenex tissues. It's insane. But not with this one. With this one, it's that one spray that allows you to experience all the nuances and the facets of it. If you overspray elixir, you will suffocate in it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be overkill for your nose. You won't be able to decipher anymore the very subtle nuances of this fragrance. And yeah, believe it or not, the douchebaggiest of all male fragrances, Sauvage, actually is quite a nuanced fragrance in its elixir concentration. That one spray allows you, or allows the perfume rather, to dissipate very nicely around you and it's like a thin layer and envision it this way you guys 
I've been just looking at a Velázquez painting the other day. Not Las Meninas, another one. This is lady dressed all in black. She has this kind of white collar around her neck and she has these pearl earrings hanging on her ear. And it's a very dark painting, but what Velázquez did very masterfully, there's a lot of black, so there's a lot of oil on that. It's an oil painting. But those pearls, she's slightly to the profile like this. And the ear is visible and the pearl is dangling. And um, he works with very light brushes and strokes to create light in painting. And so the viewer is captivated by that pearl drop earring because he managed to give it such light with delicate strokes of, of white on top of all of these layers of black. He made that pearl pop as if it was three-dimensional, but he could only do that. He could only give that pearl that three-dimensionality and light if he delicately stroked quickly the white paint, almost as if it were a web on top of the actual pearl. Those dots and strokes of white to create reflection on the pearl. That's what makes that pearl visible in that painting. Your eye veers to the pearl immediately in that painting because it's a light stroke. All the heaviness around it with the heavy strokes of black oil, you don't see them immediately. Same applies to this. One spray is that delicate white stroke on the tip of the pearl to make it pop and become three-dimensional. If you drench yourself in it, you're not going to smell out the subtleties and the nuances. You're rather going to become numb to the fragrance. It's going to be too much for your body, too much for your olfactory senses. And you will, you know, anosmic or whatever you want to call it. You're just going to be like, I don't smell it anymore. What's going on? But if you tone it down, it's going to keep dancing around you and playing around you the whole day. Yes, longevity is beast. Projection, not so much so if you know how to dose it. If you project too much with this one, then you've, then you've not dosed it correctly. You got to tone it down. This is a skin type of fragrance. You want it to be close to you. You want the person who's allowed to come near you to be able to smell it as well and enjoy it as well. You don't want people to smell it a mile away from you. And if you're that type of person who wants people to smell you a mile away, well, then maybe you have some other issues you should, you know, contemplate dissecting and working on. Just a thought, just a thought. So be sure of yourself. You know who you are. You don't need something else to scream for you miles and miles before you even arrive. No, no need for that. No need for that. But instead, when somebody does come closer to you, then the fragrance captivates them and lures them even more in. That's where magic happens. That's where the irresistible moment of a fragrance can captivate a person. Elixir has that power. Elixir, not just because it has, you know, a very, very, very tight concentration, allegedly more intense than the Parfum version of Sauvage, but also because Elixir has warmth in it a different type of warmth than, than the other concentrations. Now I have the Eau de Toilette. I also have the Eau de Parfum. I have reviewed Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum and Parfum on my channel. So go check out all those videos uh, on my channel. But they have a certain powdery lightness, even the Eau de Parfum sweetness, which is also the licorice. But you don't get that in the elixir. No, the elixir remains stable stern, firm, not very flirty, but rather robust, secure of what it's doing. And in the heat, that oak moss that's in there that we don't have in any other of the three concentrations, eau de toilette, eau de parfum, parfum, but we do have in the elixir, the oak moss does its magic. I'll bite, it's a tiny portion of oak moss because, you know, they're not allowed to put a lot of oak moss in fragrances as per the IFRA regulations, at least in the EU. But for whatever oak moss we have in there, it's a very, very potent binder. Now, <laughs> I 
Sauvage is such a cliche of what is considered a male smelling fragrance um, that it's really hard to find any other defining words for it than to say, well, this is like a hyper masculine mask for mask, macho alpha male type of smell. It is. <laughs> That's why it's so popular. Like bottom line, like you can't really run away from it. Um, the fact that it's been reformulated and the fact that it's been reconcentrated in different concentrations and versions and variations still doesn't take away its DNA and why it became so popular. And became so popular, yes, also thank you, Johnny Depp. Good that you won the trial. But not just because of Johnny. It became popular because of the smell. You can hire super famous actors or actresses to promote your perfumes. But bottom line, if, if the perfume doesn't smell appealing to the masses, the masses are not going to buy it. There's only going to be a handful of suckers out there that are going to want to buy a perfume because their favorite actor or actress is promoting or is the face of that fragrance. But if it don't smell to ya, ya won't keep buying it. Bottom line. So, Sauvage, respect it or not, has hit the nerve of the times. Since, it, since its launch, when was that? 2015, 16? You know, the toilet form. From that moment on, it has changed mass perfumery quite a bit the ambroxan made it super popular and or you could say sauvage made ambroxan super popular uh, they made each other super popular but love it or hate it 20 years from now when we talk about the the late tens and the early 20s in male perfumery you know i say perfumes no no gender but when we talk about male perfumery you will be hearing about Sauvage. And you will be hearing about all of its iterations, how it went all the way up to the Parfum, and how after that they pushed it even more into the Elixir. But there's something else you will be hearing. This is my prediction, and everything I say in this video in any way is just my opinion, meant for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in any reality or truth. Everything is alleged. But in my opinion, you will also be hunting down the elixir because it will be discontinued pretty soon. And it's going to enter that mythology of fragrances, of Dior fragrances that have been, that we will probably be saying, oh, gone too soon. And you're thinking, how the hell do you know? Sneaky suspicion. Looking at how Dior treats their perfumes, how Dior treats the elixirs that they release. And yes, this is not the first elixir they release. True, the elixirs that they've released thus far have been for the female categories. They've had Pure Poison Elixir, Midnight Poison Elixir. Remember Midnight Poison? The entire Midnight Poison range is discontinued, let alone the elixir. They had Poison Elixir, Hypnotic Poison Elixir, all of them gone. The elixir is gone. But that you could say, well, that was just a little gimmicky release that they did. You could say that, but this is Demachie's last perfume. Francis Courjan is a different type of perfumer he's taking over now. Keeping Sauvage is one thing. I, I agree, Sauvage should always remain, at least for the next 20 to 30 years, in the roster of Dior perfumes because it revolutionized perfumery for better or for worse. And it deserves its place in history, just in terms of popularity and how many hundreds of millions, maybe even billions, it, it has earned Dior throughout the years thus far. So Elixir is kind of like, I have a feeling, Demachie's goodbye to Dior. Like, here's something really special. I'm leaving you. I'm leaving you with this. And LVMH said yes to this. <laughs> Maybe because also it was his goodbye. Uh, but it's a it's a good quality douchey perfume. And I know this sounds really bizarre, but this is going to be a sought after rarity in the future because the elixir will get discontinued. It's just, it costs a lot. It's over $140 or 140 euro, depending which part of the world you're in, for 60 mil. Yes, it has beautiful packaging. You lift the lid off and then this thing is like kind of nesting on its throne and it has this beautiful bottle design. It's a tiny little thing, but it is it is a thing of beauty. It's powerful. It's majestic. However, 
And it is loved by many because mostly people who review this say, oh my God, this is amazing. It's not strong enough to have its own identity, to have its own particular voice in, in the world of male fragrances because, truth be told, Sauvage or the Toilette already owns that place and that throne. And Sauvage or the Toilette does the job perfectly well still to this day. Or the Parfum as well. The Parfum is a hit or miss depending on who, who's wearing it. The dry down, I have a little bit of issues with the dry down on that one. As of late, in summer. In winter, not so much so. But Elixir has that DNA of Sauvage. And Sauvage is much cheaper or the toilette, but it does the job. So already the the price range of Sauvage or the toilette is much better for the masses, and it will be purchased. It will continue being purchased en masse, while Elixir, you gotta swallow the blow. Because, I mean, 140 bucks and over for 60 mil, while you can have, you know, for for let's say sixty seventy dollars the eau de toilette which is like half the price or less than half the price depending how big the bottle is you want to buy of the eau de toilette and it still does the job a lot of people are going to think three four five six times before they kind of grab the elixir hence why i believe the elixir is going to disappear what Demashi did here, my humble opinion only, is that he wanted to deliver a non-mass released Sauvage, which is hard to do. It's kind of like a paradox. One of the world's best sold male fragrances. How can you make them niche? It was his, maybe his goodbye wish. He was like, you know what, I, I really want to give this one that quality, that extra level of quality, make it niche, make a mass release niche for me before I'm done for, before I go. This is how this thing smells to me. Delicate nuances, facets of Sauvage, delicately etched into its DNA structure to create an elegant version of Sauvage. So is it groundbreaking? No, because it's still Sauvage. It costs double or triple according to which concentration you compare it to of Sauvage. And it only delivers poetry when you underspray it so that you are able to see all those beautiful brush strokes of the Velasquez brush strokes that are super delicate. Because and, 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 if, you, if you spray the elixir like you would spray the other toilette of Sauvage, forget about it. You're not going to smell out the nuances. So it's like a very fine tapestry, which I would never see for such an aggressive, mass-released, metallic-smelling perfume for men. You know, the alpha male panty dropper douchebag perfume. Um, I would never have thought that they would try to elevate that and, and give it some sort of elegance and poetry, but they did. So this one doesn't stand a chance <laughs> because obviously you got to spray it less. You got to pay two to three times more for it. You got to know this one is made for, I want to say, towards the direction of the connoisseur of perfumes. The person that is wearing perfumes for themselves, not for others. Another paradox and another reason why I believe this one is not going to last long on the market because this is the type of perfume you wear for yourself, not for others. It even has a slight bitter note in it. Guess what the bitter note is? You guessed it. It's the oak moss. It has that... This has lavender in the heart, so forget about calling this a shipra. It's a fougere. But it's trying out the shipra outfit. And it's going into that, you know, let me be sophisticated... Let me not be a mass-released product, even though it is a mass-released product. So there's a lot of paradoxes running around in this one. And as I said, you're not wearing it to the club to get laid. You could, 
but this is not the one. This is the one you wear. It, it's it's the intimate one. It's the one that somebody smells when they come really close to you because you got to underplay it. It's something to wear for the pleasure of yourself. And in fact, I've been wearing it a lot right before bed. I go to bed, just one spritz, and I fall asleep. There's something really beautiful about this one. Because it's soothing, it's kind of calming. There's that bitter note in there that... I personally really like because it balances out the lavender quite nicely. I don't know if the sandalwood they use here is synthetic. Probably is because, you know, with harvesting of sandalwood, it's a huge issue at the moment worldwide. But uh, a lavendery powdery note is in there as well. The cardamom plays a really, really big part in this. The patchouli... It's a beautiful patchouli. You know, patchouli can smell super cheap. This is a really, really nice patchouli. Very well blended, very well balanced, detailed, intricate, well put into perspective. But you got to downplay this one. Tone it down. Always tone it down. Don't tone up. And so that controversy of, of Sauvage, actually, its ultimate concentration being the most niche really, in its intentions, means that this particular concentration is de destined to, to not survive. No. If, if you were, you know, to pick out of the four, eau de toilette, eau de parfum, parfum, and elixir, the eau de toilette and the eau de parfum are going to survive. The other two, not so sure about them. Parfum, maybe, but elixir, forget it. So, um... I am curious to know what Francis Kurjan is going to do with the Sauvage range. Is he going to try to reformulate them? Because we know Francis is a master of lavender. He does lavender like rarely anybody else. Sauvage is all about the lavender and the licorice. But guess what? Francis does licorice like nobody's business. Onoir is... A lavender licorice masterpiece. This one has licorice in it too. So now that Francis is at Dior and has an opportunity to tweak stuff, to reformulate things, because as we know, and Dior loves to do this, perfume houses reformulate fragrances all the time. What's going to happen to the Sauvage family now that Francis is at the helm of Dior perfumes? Demachie kind of changed Francis is au noir quite a bit. And in fact, Francis is now reformulating it back to its original state minus the green color. Demachie allegedly discontinued completely Cologne Blanche for his own Cologne Royale. But now Francis is bringing back Cologne Blanche. So is Francis also going to kind of say, thank you, Demachie, for trying to delete my presence at you. Let me now do the same for you, honey boo boo. Let's tweak Sauvage and make it better. Now, I'm all for it because I trust Francis's nose when it comes to lavender and licorice in particular, like he's a master. But at the same time, you guys, I really wanted to have the OG elixir before it potentially gets reformulated. You know, Demachie's vision of Sauvage elixir. Now, you know, I'm not a big fan of Demachie at Dior. What he did at Dior, for me, a lot of it just wasn't it. And how the reformulations of all the poisons happened under him, just a travesty, really. Also, the reformulation of the core three Collection Privé fragrances, of which, one, he discontinued, Colin Blanche, but uh, Bois d'Argent was reformulated in Noir almost butchered. It was gone for a while, then it came back due to popular demand because customers were like, hey, bring back Onoir. What gives? But he did something right, or his team for him, when they created Sauvage in terms of popularity. This perfume is it just a mass pleaser. But elixir not. It smells amazing if you know your perfumes, and if you love a delicate, nuanced forcefulness. You see a master at work. This is a wonderful perfume. I'll bite. It ain't going to have a future. But it will be sought after in the future. And people are going to want to buy it. <laughs> and they're going to hunt it down, even though it's going to get discontinued. This is just my opinion. Now,
Ah. It's really hot right now. We're, we're in the middle of summer. And I can tell you, this thing warms up on the skin so beautifully. It doesn't screech or scream. Again, if you underplay it, but it rather gives you a soft, soft suede-like veneer of, um, of lavender with sandalwood, patchouli. There's vetiver in there. But it's not as metallic as we're used to from the other toilette. It doesn't smell as synthetic. The ambroxan, I mean, you can't escape the ambroxan when it comes to, um, to Sauvage. Although, again, it, it, it's tame. You know, we don't have natural ambergris in here. There's no real ambergris here. Forget about it. But there's oak moss. And the oak moss plays its role. And it's subtle. It's a subtle, subtle, powdery veneer. The lavender is um, almost not floral. The lavender becomes like a fading purple lilac -y concept. It's as if from the lavender, you know, have, if you've ever picked lavender flowers and if you've, if you've ever dried them and then used them in your wardrobe, um, they have um, like a, um, a fluffy consistency, like they, almost as if they were flocked. And it's as if we've, we've turned the, the, the flocking of lavender into a smell. You literally manage to smell through elixir the furry aspect of, of the lavender flower and plant, which to me is masterful. You, but but you got to underspray it. There's a thing flying. You, you got to underspray it to reach that level of, of delicate, delicate nuances. And how the flocked aspect of the lavender flower reflects light. It rather absorbs light. That's why lavender is not one of those shiny flowers where the petals seem to be bouncing light off of them. No, it's velvety. Uh, lavender is velvety. It absorbs light. And, and, and this one has a velvety consistency. Now, the parfum... hints at the velvet aspect of lavender but this but the elixir is full-blown like hey let me give you the nuanced details of lavender and this is how it's done it's like smelling the fluffy flocked part of, of the lavender flower it's 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 yeah, it, it's that delicate and nuanced and and you gotta really really be able to sniff that out and you can only sniff that out if you under spray one spray is all you need not more and then in the heat of summer this one blossoms so beautifully better than in winter in winter it does turn tend to become metallic -y. kind of it boxes itself in and it becomes a little bit um it, it almost assumes a character and the nature of um hmm. A, a little bit of a brat, of a spoiled kid of saying like, no, I don't want to do this right now. No, I don't want to eat that right now. No, you know, it goes like into that moody territory. But in summer, it's tame, tame as a lion cub. Granted, the lion cub likes its parents and it allows itself to be tamed because you know how it is with lions. <laughs> you can't tame a lion. A lion does what a lion does. Same with tigers, but that's a whole other can of worms. Anyway, this one should be worn in the heat, my personal opinion, um, rather than in winter. This is a beautiful summer fragrance. And it's poetic. And you got to really, really wear it for yourself. Enjoy it alone at home. One spray is going to get you through the day. And it's just going to make you feel... People used to say, I mean, there's this tendency of saying a lot. It's kind of become really popular to say chef's kiss. Um, you know how certain words and phrase, phrasing becomes really popular at the moment? Chef's kiss is a thing. 
well, this is kind of the chef's kiss version of, uh, of, of, of a man's work in a perfume house and then leaving, uh, you know, retiring. And then this is kind of the very poetic, delicate goodbye. I love it. So do I recommend it? If you can, try to get it cheaper. Because sometimes, you know, some perfumeries have special offers on certain perfumes or not. Um, but uh, I, I recommend getting a bottle before they're discontinued. It might take a couple of years before they're gone. Trust you me, they will be gone. Just my opinion. But this is what I feel is going to happen. So I got mine. Did you get yours? Subscribe.